winner of this match, the winner of this, excuse me, matchup, will be the first person in EVO history to win two tournaments in the same event, the same year. The crowd is feeling it. A lot of tension in the room. Low roundhouse trades a tiger shot. John gets in the air. Almost a combo, not quite. Got that position. Tiger Knee closes the distance, prevents Chun from throwing another fireball. John has adapted his game, been very smart. He's been back from so far. On the verge of eliminating Nuki. Coming back from the loser's bracket. Will it happen? Overcut right down to the wire. John, John Joy, Joy, ladies and gentlemen. John Joy, ladies and gentlemen. What a great hug. What a great champion. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Born Free here. I am with the legendary John Choi at NorCal Regionals. How the hell are you? I'm tired, but doing okay. Tired, but doing okay. How much work goes into something like this? Um, uh, just lots of, you know, lots and lots and hours of planning, a lot of communications, a lot of coordination. Um, I would say it takes about three to four months to plan for this. And then during the actual weekend, I'm literally here 24 seven. So. Yeah, it gets a little exhausting, but I'm glad that it's working out okay so far. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Well, I should do a lot of interviews, but they're going, they're going great. Uh, there's a lot of top players here. They always come here. Um, and I wanted to ask you, uh, I think maybe start like going back, obviously, right? Because <laughs> you are an absolute legend. So uh, let's start with, you were known as the Korean Inferno, right? Can you tell me where that name came from? Uh, so it was Evo 2006 or seven. I forget exactly. There was a little pamphlet that was made for some up and coming, or not up and coming, but some players to watch out for at Evo. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Seth Killian wrote all of the intros. Oh, um, so if you open up the pamphlet under my section, it literally said something like, like the Korean Inferno. And then it just kind of stuck from there. And so that's been kind of like my secondary name i guess so yeah the credit goes out to set for coming up with that that's hilarious so let's go right back to the beginning what was the first i mean I, i'm going to assume it's street fighter 2 but what was the first fighting game you played and then which what was the first fighting game you took seriously street fighter 2 i mean i guess i played street fighter 1 but that wasn't a competitive game nice. you just play against a computer uh, but i enjoyed it a lot and then when street fighter 2 came out um you know, everyone played it and you know, I was just one of those people that just jumped on board. Okay, and then when did the scene feel like it was be... Uh, I know it was competitive, I remember it, right? I remember it being competitive in the arcades, people wanted to beat each other, but when, when did it feel like it was becoming more of a community and um, more of a science, I guess? Uh, I guess when you know, online first started having its presence. Obviously, when Street Fighter 2 came out, uh, there was no such thing as the internet. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was a dark ages. Um, and then when the internet came out, and there was a thing called news groups, which is kind of like, you know, Facebook groups today. Um, and that's what kind of started the first B3 series that turned into evolution later. So the Canons and a few other people were really key people that kind of brought the scene together. So once we, there was a form of, you know, a community to you know a place for the community to discuss then i think you start to build the community and that's kind of where it all began so i would say that's around 95 ish or so i think uh b3 was 96 so probably like 94 95 ish is when the news group started kind of taking off and then the result was a lot of the banter back and forth was well you know this guy over here is the best no this guy's the best and so how do you prove that you have a tournament yeah. and that's what kind of started this entire thing and so what sort of what at that time what made you because this blows my mind because i i remember at that time and i was living somewhere completely different didn't have a community or anything like that and i thought street fighter was kind of cool and i like be beating people and whatever but um I think in Bang the Machine, it might have been Bang the Machine, it showed you to be, it, it put, certainly portrayed you to be a very focused person, almost to the point where, uh, you know, you you were making sacrifices in your life for Street Fighter, um, and you were sort of like the original Takedo in terms of the, this idea of holistic, you know, you're going to the gym and all this sort of stuff. I, I, you know, that's what at least what came across in the, 
in the documentary um what what made you want to focus in on this game so so badly at that time uh well first let me say so the documentary obviously they had an angle to take with each other characters uh, and so that's definitely the angle that they took with me um might have been kind of exaggerated a little bit um okay. but yeah in general the idea was there and i guess just my very nature um i'm one that doesn't like to dabble in stuff so if i do something like i really do it um so i i did taekwondo i did that for 12 years i went to like the journal olympics i did that for a long time. i was wow. really extremely focused um came to the states and then i turned that into i took up actually wrestling <laughs> um so and i did that for many years um and then i also played street fight on the side uh, but i think it was after high school and then i got into college then um i had to kind of give up my wrestling pad simply because it just it took too much toll on you um so then i kind of needed a new hobby to focus on and and that's when right when the internet started to come out there used to be and there you know started with b3 and a bunch of other bigger tournaments and so that's where i kind of focused my energy on so i guess i've always been kind of into that you know competitive spirit and just kind of just if you do something you got to do it right so i guess that's what kind of translated into that character that you saw in the documentary okay and then uh in the back in those days like you probably weren't talking about frame data or things like that but what kind of discussions were you having in regards to breaking the game down and how were you thinking did you did you have like a way of training or was it just like we're all meeting in the arcade yeah back then it was it wasn't as organized in the way you approach the game right? obviously there's no training mode it was basically if your training mode is going to the arcade and talking to people right yeah. uh, because there's limited machines and you can only be on the machine for so long. Yeah. So most of the time is a lot of discussion online and just discussing in person. So I wouldn't say, and there was no concept of frame data back then. You just knew, you know, today we call it frame advantage, you know, frame disadvantage. Yeah. But back then it's just like, oh, like you get priority, you know, you should do this after this. So it was kind of a more, you know, you know it kind of subconsciously. It wasn't really like spelled out. So a little bit different. and. Today, obviously, you know, as soon as the game comes out, they present you with all of the data, right? And yeah, so yeah. I think it breeds like a totally different kind of player. Um, people that are not using instincts, but actually using more of some science. Um, so it's kind of interesting that, you know, that has evolved. Yeah, it's, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that, the difference between back then and now. That's <laughs> a lot has changed and it's changing quite rapidly. Um, w which was your uh, favorite? Street Fighter uh, or fighting game over the years? Uh, so, out of the Street Fighters, I really like Hyper Fighting, okay. uh, Alpha 2, and Alpha 3. Okay. Those are considered, I guess, my top favorites. Hyper Fighting with being the third one, Turbo Hyper Fighting? Yes, or the third one. The third one, I love yeah. that one too. That was the one that was released on the SNES. Yes. The Super <laughs> Nintendo. Like a, and maybe that had a you know, part to do with it, but yeah, I really like that version. Yeah, that was also Tomo's last game, right? Is it Tomo? Uh, he played up to Super, actually. Um, and then it was like tor basically the end of Super, the beginning of ST is when he stopped playing. Okay. So who were your big, who, who do you think were your biggest, I mean, who were your biggest rivals over the years? So, you know, from World War all the way until probably like almost ST, I was a young kid. I rode my bicycle to golf land to play um it wasn't until i think hyper fighting days i was finally old enough to drive so obviously it was just my local competition yeah. and the furthest i could go is like drive 20 minutes to go like something golf land so back then um thomas osaki was a well-known player back in the day um and along with you know jason cole graham wolf jason yeah. nelson those are the people and then i wouldn't say it was much later when i got into college i actually started traveling a little bit more to distant places so I think that was around the days of Alpha 2 days. And so um, that's with Alex Valle. And then, you know, I had a long, long history with him for the next, you know, I don't know, decade, even longer. And then I would say, yeah, and then I kind of just took a backseat. <laughs> now I'm just kind of watching from behind in the sidelines now. But you, you uh, at one point, what, at what point would, did it become like the international rivalry started? Was it when Daigo came over in 97 or 98 or whatever? Uh, I would say that kick started everything. So um, obviously, we never had an opportunity to see, you know, how other countries play. I think 
for B3, we had people come from Canada, but that's uh, probably the okay. furthest it was. It was basically a U.S. competition. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when and when Daigo showed up, you know, it kind of opened our eyes. And, so, you know, we saw how behind we were in the technology. Yeah. And so I think that might have kind of sparked the fire in people. And then, obviously, when Evolution became a more of a kind of a bigger presence and then i think when it also moved to las vegas then it kind of opened up the doors for actually being truly an international competition i know in 2008 you won uh two games in evo um is is that your proudest moment or is there another moment that sticks out as like your proudest moment in in fighting games uh i i mean that's definitely a, a memorable moment but i actually think when Bang the Machine was filmed and there was that very first US versus Japan, yeah. that experience was probably stands out as probably the most memorable. I mean, that was just, it, there was no precedence for that, right? Um, it was just a chance to see what the other country had to offer. Um, and pretty much it was reminded me of back in the days when B3 first started out. Mm. You know, there was no video first, there was no YouTube. So obviously, it's just text online that says so and so at so such location is the best right yeah. and then so having them actually show up in person and take place and you know duke it out that was a defining factor and i think that was also the same thing um you know we thought we were good in some games and then japan crushed us and then they thought they were great in marvel and then we crushed them yeah. so i thought that was probably the moment i remember the most they did they genuinely think they were good at marvel they, at that I, time like they were into it uh yeah, yeah so uh, they were so they were really into the versus games um and in fact i think right after you know we kind of dominated they wanted to play uh x-men <laughs> versus you know, children and they're like oh we you know we're like the best in this or marvel street Fighter. they started naming all the, all the other versus games um we're like uh we don't have anybody here right now that plays those games uh, but okay. but they thought you know like that they could totally like dominate in, th in that game so it was kind of interesting yeah i mean i think in general you know if they do play they have a pretty big scene and i think they probably thought they were just gonna just wipe us you know on all the games and that took them for a surprise that was when you went out that's when you went you guys went to japan right correct so who was in that team it was myself uh it was alex valle mike watson and then Shen Chang, and then we had Seth Killian, who was an alternate <laughs> because simply so, because somebody couldn't make it, and then Ricky Ortiz was also an alternate because Duck Duck could not make it. Uh, but while we were over there, we also I was also on the Super Turbo side, and then uh, we needed more players, so I actually jumped on the Marvel <laughs> team as well, oh, really? <laughs> even though I don't really play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and so those guys won. They won the Street Fighter, and you guys won the Marvel. Is that how it worked out? Uh, so there was four different games: there was Super Turbo, Alpha Three. Third Strike and Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah. And so they beat us in all the Street Fighters and then we beat them in Marvel. All right, so you got something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that probably opened your eyes a lot in terms of, you know, the standard over there. Did you feel, when you walked away from that, how did you feel and what did, how did you, what was your game plan for, I, I guess, getting better? I don't know if it was a necessary game plan, but it definitely opened up our eyes to the caliber, you know, the level that people could get to. I mean, back then, Street Fighter wasn't as big as it is now. Um, it was a much smaller niche community, and there was only a handful of players that, you know, would be, you know, dominating at the top. It's, it's like, you know, when we first went, it's like there was like 50 Daigos at every arcade, yeah. right? Um, I, and I think, you know, just the culture itself, just seeing an arcade at every other corner, and seeing it filled like with people nonstop, mm -hmm. that's just really eye opening. So I think definitely, you know, the popularity definitely helps. Um, and that was, you know, that's hard to change, right? I wish more people played it, but you know, the fact is in the US, it just wasn't as popular with the general masses. So I guess the only other way to attack it is you need to meet more frequently and, you know, try to train even harder. Okay, uh, and then, you know, I guess you moved into a period where certainly Daigo was coming over, maybe Takedo, uh, some of the Japanese players would come over once a year for EVO at least, um, and you would get to play them, and, the, and I guess that's when those rivalries really started up. Now, 2008, I think it's nearly your, nearly the 10-year the anniversary of when you won uh, in, was it, CV, is it CVS3 and ST? 
ST, is yeah, that right? CVS2 and ST, that's correct. CVS2 and, uh, sorry. I have CVS3 on the mind because I keep th- I keep thinking <laughs> yeah. that Capcom is going to make it, but uh, whatever CVS2 and uh, and ST. Um, I th- that time your father was sick as as well, and he had told you to play. Is that right? C- uh, could you? Yeah, kind of. So can you talk me through that that whole uh, your, your your preparation for Evo and you know what transpired? Well, I mean, so. Obviously, I played a lot of Street Fighter back then, um, and yeah, just a short while before Evo turned out, um, he got diagnosed with pretty advanced form of cancer, and so there was, obviously, there was a you know big shakeup, um, and pretty much the doctors were kind of split. He got different opinions. Um, basically, you know, most were just saying it's terminal, and you got about a year left, and just you should just try to live it out as best as you can. Uh, a couple, you know, somebody else thought that you know what you should try this risky surgery you know we think it might save you um and you know the doctors were split on what to do and so you know he decided to make the you know decision to you know go for that risky surgery um and so so yeah there was a lot of stuff going on in the family life so i was going to cancel my trip and he had a surgery right before um in fact i think it was like five days before four days before um so he came out um Surgery went fine, so he was out of it. Um, and yeah, he said, you know, just, you know, basically, you know, there's no need for you to just stay here. Um, you know, I'm doing my thing. You know, you should just go do yours. Um, it was it was an interesting times, but so yeah, I decided to actually go, and it was kind of interesting because I really didn't play for about you know the last month or so. Obviously, you know, because we were busy dealing with family stuff. Uh, so I think I mentioned, you know, when I actually got there. It was like a completely different mindset than previous years, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You train all year for Evo and you get there and I think what happens to a lot of people is they're holding on too tight, right? It's like, oh, like it's it's too big of a thing to be here and they don't want to lose, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of might people put in a kind of a mind block. And so that year, you know, I had none of that. I was just happy to be there, (laughs) right? And there was lot bigger things going on and so i think you know that helped me kind of overcome some of those you know obstacles and then yeah i ended up winning and you know kind of wrote a little blur about it um and yeah since then obviously my attitude towards street fighter and just life in general changed a lot i guess you know when you have a life-changing experience like that um you know tends to do that to people right yeah i don't i couldn't even i don't think i'd be able to handle that to be perfectly honest but um yeah i mean i'm glad that your father you, you know at that time it worked out and uh, incredibly supportive for him to to send you there uh that's amazing um and there's definitely i think there's definitely something to be said it's funny how many people end up winning and then afterwards say I didn't practice the last month. <laughs> like, do you, you ever think about that? Did you think about that afterwards? Like that that idea of, I mean, you talked about it a little bit here, yeah. but that idea of I don't know, taking it, taking breaks or what what have you? Yeah, I'm, I'm all about taking breaks. I mean, we all need vacation from stuff, right? And if you're training hard enough, it's basically like your job, right? So I think taking a little break will definitely kind of help you refresh. Um, some people might see other way they just want to try to train 24 7 and you know that could work for them as well but i've tried that at, at not just street fighter but a lot of things and it didn't always turn out the best so i am a firm believer in you know taking a step back here and then to kind of just you know take a breather and then come back to it um at what point did you start to sort of i guess i don't know did life get in the way or did you start to tone down your 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 playing you know in the FGC? Uh, it was started pretty much at that point. Um, so, you know, he had a surgery and then I was also finishing up my grad school. Um, mm-hmm. So after I finished my grad school, um, about a year or two after he ended up passing. And so I think oh, I mentioned sorry. earlier, um, yeah, you kind of reevaluate things when yeah. things like that happen. And so, you know, I, I love Street Fighter, I still love it, um, but you know, might be the older age, um, but yeah, I definitely took a kind of a step back and was like, you know, there's a lot of other things I'm also interested in doing. Um, obviously, I spending, started spending more time with family at that point. Um, so, so yeah, I think it kind of started from there. And then, and then the doctors, you know, they tell you, oh, since you're, you know, direct linked, uh, you know, you have a higher chance of getting cancer as well. And, you know, my other 
<laughs> so I actually got into like working out a lot more um, to try to kind of alleviate that. So yeah, obviously my focus kind of changed a lot. Um, and then, yeah, and I just started working full time. And yeah, so starting from there, I started taking a more and more of a kind of step back and looking at it from the sidelines. And then that's what, it, and you know, and then the scene just kind of, kind of blowing up with Street Fighter 4. So I think it was like the next logical progression since I was hosting NCR, which was just at arcades, you know, it was just like, like 50 people that just showed up. And so to get to the next level and just sort of make it more into an event. And that's where I were here today, actually. Yeah, so. absolutely. I've seen you play, you know, um, in Street Fighter 4 at least. Uh, you, I think you knocked out Daigo uh, with just Ryu fundamentals. <laughs> uh, is Ryu the character that, I mean, everyone thinks of, when I think of you, I think of Ryu, right? Uh, is there something special about Ryu as a character? The the you know attracts you to him. Uh, well, I mean the first you know reason I picked him is when I played Street Fighter Two for the very first time. Mm -hmm. The only character I knew was Ryu again from Street Fighter One, yeah. and so I just ended up picking Ryu. So that was the only reason. And then um, you know I, nobody knew how to do any special moves. There was nothing listed, and so I just tried to focus on that character for a long time. And then you know over the years I switched back and forth from other characters, but. It just felt like he seems kind of well-rounded and balanced. Mm. And so I started, you know, gravitating towards him. And then later on, you know, he became known as kind of like just being very, you know, not too fancy, just the fundamentals, the basics. And, you know, I kind of like that approach. So, yeah, it's been, he's been my character of choice for many, many years. And you're, you're like known for your fundamentals. You're known for your fireball game, your zoning, your spacing. Um, was there a point where you you were like, I'm going to focus on this and this is how I'm going to get better at it? No, I don't think so. Um, back in the days, I think the game wasn't as, there wasn't as much variety. Obviously, there was less number of characters. And, you know, anybody that played was basically just focused on fundamentals because there was no supers, there was no customs. That's all there was. So mm -hmm. I didn't think of that as something to focus on. It was just a natural, normal thing people did. Um, I think what happened is, you know, obviously we have, we still have a lot of old players, but majority of the scene, I would say it's kind of been a newer, you know, generation. And so they were not around during those old times. So for them to see kind of like that approach is like, oh, like that's fundamentals, right? So I think that's what kind of, you know, like just cemented that idea but it wasn't anything i focused on specifically it's just i think i'm one of the old dinosaurs that are still around doing that and not as focused on the newer stuff so that's kind of like what i got stuck with i guess do you play any street fighter 5 and if you do what are your thoughts on on ryu right now i do not play any street fighter 5 um i played it i think for a few hours when i downloaded the latest season um but and ryu is really bad in this game um it's not really designed for you know a character like him in fact just you know fireballs and zoning is not really a concept that's in street fighter 5 although Manat seems like you know she's actually a true zoner but in general 95 percent of the characters are all about getting in your face doing massive damage with 50 50s or crush counters and just just fishing for big damage so the way the game plays out um that kind of style it doesn't it's not really effective in this game fair enough that is yeah i mean i've heard that a lot uh the fgc right now is going through uh, i guess a lot of growing pains i call them growing pains um a lot of things are changing a lot of th and you've seen it oh <laughs> you know you've been very much entrenched in it over time now it's people are very vocal online all that sort of stuff uh there's a lot of you know the word esports is thrown around and you know they talk about esports is a, a, a being different from the fgc and do you do you have a point of view on where we're at right now and where you where you hope it where you hope it goes i mean it's just a natural you know tendency of people they're resistant to change right so i think we saw this almost exact same situation when evo decided to go to console from arcades there was so many people against it, you know, they're like, you know, you're ruining it, 
you know, you can't do console, you have to stick to arcade, like this, I will not even attend, you know, this doesn't make sense, you know, this is stupid. Um, but obviously, you know, the Canons, you know, knew in order to, you know, continue to do growth, you can't stay with arcade cabinets. And so they made the decision to go to console and a lot of people were against it at first. And yeah, it was the same kind of idea that there was a lot of growing pains. And so you had kind of both opposing sides, but you know, after, you know, many years, obviously now, you would people would think you're crazy if you decide to go back to arcade right like it has to be console yeah and so i think it's kind of naturally at that stage uh from arcade to console you know kind of blew up and now we're at this crossroads where you have these huge esports you know leagues with you know pc games and everything and fighting games scene is you know small compared to that so if you want to get to that next level if you want to get to the next round of sponsors and attract you know the investment i think you kind of have to accept the fact to go big obviously there'll be some people against it they might be happy with the way things are now but i think the way things are at now it's kind of really hard to grow at a rate that you should be doing or that you want without accepting some of the aspects surrounding all these esports you know things that people are kind of afraid to kind of latch on to yeah you there are things that you have to give up if you want you know, if if everybody, if everybody wants to work in, you know, the FGC and wants to, you know, to get paid full time and have pro players and that sort of stuff, you kind of have to give things up. So, yeah, it, that's, that's kind of the way it is. Talking of giving things up, the news yesterday was like, uh, Kaba, uh, sort of cheering on Mena, um, and uh, some people felt that it was a bit much. Uh, and there are other people who are old school and saying, well that's the way it should be that's the way it was in the arcades um but you know we don't live in that period now what are, what are your thoughts uh, on that type of thing well yeah i mean back in the days in the arcades it was also different there wasn't a pro league there wasn't pro players so at the end of the day you know you could distract them and they would be just losing a quarter or something right <laughs> um but now the scene is very different you actually have professional players that are here for a living and so with that in mind i'm all for cheering on your friends and you know getting you know excited and you know getting all that hype out there but i think you cannot cross the line where you distract the players or even intimidate them uh, to the fact because they are here or a lot of people are here as a career and this is a coordinated and professional league with points so like you know with that said you know like you could cheer on, you could do all that, but you can't, don't intimidate the players and, you know, you don't want to get too overboard. And I think, you know, we should have set some policy in place. I, you know, I didn't think it was going to get to that level, but we'll have to review the footage and, you know, maybe put out some official statement around it. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, I don't think that you can um, foresee that, you know, I think as we, as we evolve, you know, these things happen and then new, you know, rules are, are put in place or what have you um can i ask you actually do you have like a favorite match that you played a favorite match that i played yeah uh, i know it's hard to i know you probably had a lot right but do you ever think of do you ever think of one or two that where you go i enjoyed that one a lot or i played amazing in that one or what have you i think matches that obviously you learn from are always the most exciting um not necessarily the ones that i win um in fact i barely remember my wins but you remember your losses right um so i would say b3 is one of them um the first time daigo came over and i played him was definitely one of them um i think that you know i stats b3 it stands out because you know you play the game with a certain set of rules in mind mm. and you run into something that's beyond your scope of understanding beyond the rules yeah. and so you get confused and so i had to try to kind of figure it out on the fly and so that was memorable that you know i had to since i didn't understand it i you know if you can't beat him join him i decided to use his technique right back so <laughs> so that was interesting and then you know when daigo first came here there were light years ahead of us in alpha 3 and so just he just like demolished everybody and just seeing all the techniques and combos and you know what you could do with the customs you know that was an eye opener and so i definitely remember you know that day so pretty much anytime you know you run into a you know big adversary i would say is the memorable times so were you there that day that daigo first came over 
the one that has the footage with Alex and his wife Beta and all that business. Yeah, so um, so Alex and you know Daigo they played that exhibition match, and yeah. then afterwards Daigo played against five uh, U.S. players, and I was uh, one of them. Uh, yeah, and okay. then and then Daigo just beat pretty much everybody down with different characters. Yeah, I heard he I pulled out uh, Rolento and somebody else. Like uh, I've forgotten now, but he had two characters yeah, that he kind of liked. Rolento, Jen. Again, oh, again, yeah, yeah, guy, um, Akuma, I believe, yeah. Okay, so I've only got a few more questions, and I got to let you go because I know you're a really busy man. Uh, I did want to ask you, do you have any favorite players right now, uh, and do you have like a, a favorite player of all time? Right now, I would say, and I think somebody asked me this recently too, um, infiltration and Tokido, um, simply because, you know, Street Fighter Five is. Is a game it's hard to get really creative i think the game is designed to you know incur a certain type of play but you know through it all you know infiltration and took you to both find a way to play their style right infiltration is known for you know being really annoying kind of running away being playing it really safe <laughs> right um, which is what justin was also famous yeah. for and you know and he found a way to do that you know first with you know nash and then now he has his monot and then infiltration or in Tokido, you know, he obviously was waiting for his signature character to drop. And then as soon as Akuma came out, he found a way to make Akuma work, right? Mm -hmm. And if you know, if you see other people play, you you could tell it's hard to tell who's playing who these days, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. everyone plays the same. But I feel like you could always tell when Tokido infiltration are playing. So I, you know, that's what you know. It's really interesting to me. And uh, do you have an all-time favorite? All time favorite is oh, there's so many to mention. <laughs> um, obviously, you know all the classics. Vae stands out because he plays very unorthodox, okay. um, and so it's kind of a similar. Like, he plays Vae style, <laughs> um, so you know it's he. I would say he's not known as a technician, and he mm -hmm. plays a lot with instinct, and he just has a way to make things work that should not work. So I would say he's kind of polar opposite of me. I'm yeah. more like slow and methodical. He's just like, just seems random <laughs> and kind of wild, but he finds a way to work, make it work. So, you know, I definitely admire that ability of him. And then obviously Daigo is kind of the opposite of that. He is, you know, very methodical as well. And then there's just little glimpses of craziness <laughs> that, you know, people think that, you know, he's a mind reader. And so, those two kind of opposing styles is I, I really enjoy watching and so i would say you know over the years they have been kind of like my favorite players i've been asking this question a lot of people is you know when you're in a in, a, in you're on the stage or on the stream or whatever did you have techniques for dealing with pressure did you ever feel nervous did you have ways of getting around it or was it just experience i think it's just I mean, at least for me, it's just experience. Anytime you go into an unfamiliar situation, is going to be nerve wracking. Mm. Um, whether it's you know Street Fighter finals or you know school finals or whatever it may be, right? Um, so you know, I'm sure my very first tournament, you know, I was really nervous because I didn't know what to expect. But after you attend hundreds and hundreds of tournaments, it just became kind of like second nature. And so at a certain point, like I don't even know who's around. I'm just like focused on the game. But yeah, I, I don't have any special techniques, you know, some people might do breathing techniques or whatever, mm. but I would just say at the end of the day, you just need to get the experience in and get your you know mind and body accustomed to the tournament, you know, mm. situation. And then that's all, you know, that's what works for me. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, your life nowadays, if we get like a little window into your life, um, what, what kind of things are you... It, interested in are you are you working all the time are you uh, do you have hobbies do you go to the gym do you watch movies how do you unwind like can i can i get i, I mean that sounds like a lot but i guess i'm just trying to get like a little window into uh john Choi. uh pretty much like your next door average guy yeah i mean i work a full-time job um i like to work out a lot um spend a lot of time with family my mom lives you know just a few miles away my sister is like literally two minute drive um uh, okay my dog i have a wife i got married last year oh, um nice. so yeah planning that was you know much harder than planning ncr yeah, um so yeah just just work my nine to five come home you know 
work out a bit, make some dinner. Yeah, I, I'm really boring these days. I, as for hobbies, um, I enjoy watching a lot of movies. So I'm on Netflix 24-7. <laughs> it's always running in the background. And then um, we like to go to the movies a lot. Although lately, it's been a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, it's very average, nothing special. And then obviously, there's NCR stuff on the side. Got any uh, Netflix shows that you think uh, people should watch if they haven't already? Oh, all the, all the classics, right? I mean, people talk about Stranger Things, and yeah. now I'm watching, like, Dark, and literally almost any new series, like, I started watching. I think they have a ton of good stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good for binge-watching. It's just, it's very, very addictive. Um, so the last question I always ask is, is there anything that you wish I'd asked you or, or a topic that you wanted to touch on or, or speak about? It's always a tough. It's always a tough question. It's always a tough question. A lot of people just go, uh, I don't. And other people, they something clicks. Mm, yeah, I can't think of anything. There was a lot thrown at me though, so <laughs> I'm trying to kind of remember. Mm. What do you yeah. think? I say, well, I'll give you a Javits question. What do yeah. you think of the state of the FGC nowadays? I think it's at the crossroads again. Um, it's gone you know, much bigger than before. But I feel like in the last, you know, two years or so, you haven't seen much more growth. Um, growth comes when you have new players coming into the scene, right? Mm -hmm. Growth is not when the top players are still at the top and there's no new generation of players. So you have to kind of look at the signups for just tournaments in general. And I don't think there has been much growth in the last like couple of years. Um, so, something needs to change whether it's you know maybe some new exciting games or how the events are presented um so i think that's why the topic of esports is like oh do we go big and you know get on you know technical in there or just you know do we want to stay fgc and and i necessarily don't think fgc and esports is is an independent is a separate yeah. entity it's it's basically the one it's the same thing um but i think people just like to categorize it into this smaller niche mm -hmm. i think people need to understand in general it's just it's playing games right it's entertainment um and you know how do you want to use what you, what resources you have available to make that even bigger mm -hmm. um some people might not care to make it bigger but obviously there's a lot of people here a lot of money's on the line so they want to go big so you know, I, I think you can't think of it as two separate things. I think it's just a part of the same big family. I think that's a good way to put it and a good way to end the interview. I have to say it's an absolute honor. Thank okay. you so much for doing it. Uh, I know that you, uh, it took a little pushing because you are a busy guy, uh, but I think people are going to be very thankful uh, that you did it. So we're actually going to say goodbye to these guys. So bye, guys.